Well, thank you everyone that took the Twitter and submitted your questions for this weekly Q&A. If you want to partake in asking questions to have them answered in future Q&As, follow the show on Twitter and you should also smash that subscribe button if for some reason you watch my videos and you haven't subscribed already. Seems kind of counterproductive, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get started here. A lot of questions get through. Hopefully I can get through as many as I can until I lose interest or I get worn out. Let's go. All right, Trent Gaspar is going to kick us off by asking, Pushberry Fire, IWC Edition, Volume 2. Sean Ross Sapp, JD from NY, Deluxe Man. Uh, Deluxe Man is a friend of mine, known him for a decade. I would push him. Uh, Barry, Sean Ross Sapp. I do not hate him. He's an annoying little twat. You know, him and I, I think, had some type of beef going back years, which is really stupid because like, he was a moron that whole time. He got, he got on me because of the shit about where I suggested WWE should have an offseason, which I'm right and he's fucking wrong, of course. But more so, like, he honed in on that and forgot that it was all part of, like, a... 12 Ways to Fix WWE series, and if I remember correctly, that was like step three or four, and that whole assumption also tied into the fact of WWE going private and not being a publicly traded company, like it was a hypothetical thing, and he's one of those idiots that'll sit there and think, oh, I've got a blue check mark and I've got followers, so I'm a big fucking deal. No, you're not. You're a dweeb, just like we all are, so shut up, but I don't hate him. Like JD from NY, JD is an abortion. Like that's the same idiot that a few years back when I said that the cruiserweights on Raw is fucking stupid. Again, I was fucking right. Like he sat there and tried to shit all over that, but he's a fucking idiot. Like you could go historically time after time after time and see whose takes are more right, more aligned with reality. I win in a fucking blow away. Blowout. Like, it's no question. That's not even arrogance. That's just stating fact. And also, when people disagree with me, I don't sit there and go blocking them like a little bitch ass like he does. So he would be the one that would fire. I'd bury Sean Ross Sapp because he's an annoying little fucker. But I don't hate him. He's just an annoying little fucker. And Deluxe Man I would push. All right. Who we got next? Uh, Jay, Jay Rance. Has a good question here. Jay Condone. Who do you think is the most crybaby wrestler currently? Wow. Lots of contenders there. But if I went WWE, AEW, Impact New Japan, and others, like a wrestler from each of those three groups, I think WWE has to be Alexa Bliss. I think AEW is probably, and again, a lot of contenders here, but I'll go with Jelly Janela. And then for everybody else, like it's got to be Jordan Grace, doesn't it? And out of those three, which one is the biggest crybaby? Because I could make a strong case for all three of them. Perhaps the single most annoying one is Jordan Grace. But all three of them have a significant case of insecurity, a significant case of buying too much of their own bullshit, a significant case of trying to sit there and get people to suck up to them to help fill a gaping void of something. So you tell me in the comments, out of those three, who is the biggest crybaby wrestler? And try to keep it to those three, because we could make arguments for plenty of others. I'm going to make it those three, Alexa Bliss, Jordan Grace, and fucking Jelly Janela. Who's the biggest crybaby in wrestling? Just, just, I, I could go on and on on that one because I could make a very strong argument for all three of them. All right, let's go. Who we got next? MC17 Clark. Why did people like Luna, Buddy Rose, Lord Alfred Hayes, Hayes Alex Calhoun, El Santo, Bruiser Brody, and even Chief J. Strongbo get a legacy induction when they damn well should have gotten their own induction? I don't know what the fuck started happening with that because didn't they do that with like Luthez and others? They did them as legacy inductions. That was really lame and really dumb. And you still don't have a physical hall of fame. Um, yeah. 
Like Luna not getting her own induction is the one that pisses me off the most. You would have thought for as long as Chief J. Strongbow worked for WWE, he would have gotten his own induction. But um, yeah, that legacy induction is really, really stupid. Um, at center, 51190, as much as we all know you worship at the feet of your tribal chief, our tribal chief, your tribal chief too, he hasn't forsaken you just because you want to be a Daniel Bryan nut hugger. I must ask a dis difficult question. If you had the book, who is the one to finally knock Roman off of his perch and why? Fantastic question. And the reality is, is I don't know who it would be at this point. Maybe it'd be somebody like a Damian Priest. Like I'm not jobbing him out to some bitch. I'm jobbing him out to somebody else that's legit. I'm jobbing him out to somebody else that could potentially be a big deal themselves. If he went down the road long enough, maybe it's somebody like a Bobby Lashley. Like, it would be somebody like that. But it's got to be somebody serious and legit. Um, at Dalek of Chaos, why is it that WWE went out of their way to pay for the Memphis Midcard piece of shit's rehab and put him in the hall, but they couldn't do the same for China when she desperately needed the help? Um, Stephanie McMahon. She stole China's man. She married China's man. You should know how this works by now. You think Stephanie isn't that fucking petty? That's why that company has only started to, in recent times, warm up a little to China because she's now dead, so it's too fucking late. Uh, but that's 100,000% Stephanie and the influence on Hunter. But it's Stephanie at the end of the day, so fuck her for that. That's why. All right, let's see here. Who do we got? Joseph Moran. Why aren't there more teenagers like me who will look back at what wrestling used to be and form their own opinions instead of going off of what people like Dave Meltzer say? Um, just a general lack of research and historical understanding. And that's not just in wrestling. That goes in sports and other things. Like... You can hear that when somebody says, for example, from a younger dumb dick generation, says something about LeBron James is the greatest of all time. Now, if you want to have that opinion, I believe you are wrong, and I believe I have enough evidence to merit proving you wrong, but there could be an argument to be made. But when I see and hear the arguments, it is clear to me that people are just saying that because of recency bias caught up in the moment, their own LeBron stand -um, and that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They just don't. And that's because they don't care. They don't research. They don't bother to check. They, you know, it's just, this is where it gets into like generational gaps. Um, you know, I, I can't really speak to teenagers. I think you could better speak to that than I fucking could, honestly. Um, at Esper504, if you had to make a New Age Breakfast Club, who would be in and why would it only be our tribal chief? Uh, last time I checked, it was Daniel Bryan who got on the book on the SmackDown creative committee that's got himself in the triple threat main event of night two of WrestleMania. Pretty sure sounds like it's fucking Daniel Bryan that's the Breakfast Club member, not our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. At Splash Bro Kieran, what do you think was going through Sid's mind as he was laying on the mat with his leg broken at WCW Sid? <laughs> Probably, ah! That was first. Number two, Fuck you, Johnny Ace! Number three, Scott Steiner, stop walking into my broken fucking leg! And imagine, in some order, probably in that order, those would be the three things that he was thinking about. <laughs> Alex asks, why do many modern wrestling fans these days uh, actually still believe NXT was created by God and not the old man Vince in 2010 when God wasn't even COO yet? Uh, because what NXT used to be and what God made it into are night and day. You know, like FCW versus NXT type of stuff. So, for all intents and purposes, it is God's NXT. It really, really is. That's why. At Nomadic Flip, if you could save a video from the WWE Network library that Peacock would likely remove due to not following their standards and practices, which one would it be? Hulk Hogan! <laughs> we want the gold, sucker! 
Hogan, we coming for you. You know the rest of it. By God, they better not have taken that shit off. <laughs> That's D1. If you have to say one, that is D1. JNW Boss 98. With WWE seeming to pay more attention to the Ruthless Aggression era, what were Yana's thoughts on the era of 2002 to 2008? Um, wasn't as good as the Monday Night Wars Attitude Era, but still plenty of good things in there, even though I think at the time I was a little harsher towards it. Um, but you still have plenty of stars. You still have plenty of interesting things going on. So wasn't that bad, certainly by hell, in comparison to what we get today. Uh, at Jared underscore Orla with Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black not being used properly in WWE, how would you book them and where would you advise them to go to be used? Uh, for both of them at this point, go to fucking NXT, I guess. How, how would I book them? I don't care. Feel like more ham and eggers to me than anything. So I don't spend any time thinking about it, frankly. At the Chris Phoenix. What do you think about a certain company having everyone and their mothers in a faction right now? Yeah, that's a reflection to me of AEW has too many goddamn people on their roster. I don't know why, Chris, you stayed away from mentioning it. Uh, you can mention the company's name. It should be a safe space here. Um, they have too many fucking factions. Nobody stands out. Everybody gets lost in the schmas. You got the pinnacle. You got the inner circle. You got the nightmare collective. You've got fucking uh, the dark order and all these other collections and conglomerations. You've got Team Taz. Like They've got too many damn factions because they have too many damn people. At center 51190, because you knew it had to be another Daniel Bryan quest word is fuck away in. As much as we all know you hate the man. When did I say I hate the man? I think what they're doing with him currently is fucking stupid. But I'm also the one that you go back years and years, James. You know better than this. I'm the one that said when they were forcing him that first time kind of into the title scene that it was really dumb. He needed to take a step back and become an Owen Hart type of character and then you could relaunch him and it'll be his best. And he was. So fuck you for that. Daniel Bryan is one of the most organically over guys in WWE that we've seen in years. Who in your view has the potential to gain the fan support the way he did? If God willing we get the audience back in the arenas. I don't know. Like I'd have to take some time and actually hear reactions from fans and See what the live audience in the arenas would say before I could really truly start to have a, an opinion on that. Um, you know, because as much as you want to say, well, it was all just solely about Daniel Bryan, a lot of that had to do with the McMahon family, and that was about Stephanie and Hunter. So it wasn't just Daniel Bryan, no matter how much you want to believe it was. Um, Nick Willis PNW is asking me a founder question that I should not even bother addressing, but you did take the time to respect me and tweet it out, so I guess I'm obliged to do so. After growing up watching the founder, the Memphis Mint Card piece of crap break 10,000 guitars, never drawing a dime, all the while, my first thought after seeing someone hold a guitar always makes me envision them hitting somebody with it. Are you the same way or am I just weird? I'm similar because of the honky tonk man. You see how I did that? Thank you. Mox guy asked, if you had the choice to have one million subscribers or one, on one of your two channels, what channel would you choose and why? Oh, holy shit. One million subscribers. I think it's the other channel, the sports channel. Because if I had a million subscribers, that means that major networks, the ESPNs of the world, Fox Sports of the world, etc., are either hiring me for a gig, offering me a gig, or they're bringing me on to make appearances on network cable television. Because how could they not? Like if I had a million subscribers, like they'd be absolute clowns and not bring me in to talk about the draft or talk about the NFL, etc. So that one, yeah. Like if it was wrestling, like you'd be a big deal, but where are you going to go with that? You know what I mean? I'm too harsh to any of the companies for them to really want to work with me. And frankly, for me to want to work with them. So yeah, it'd have to be the other channel for sure. I wouldn't complain, obviously, if this channel was the one that got to a million subscribers somehow, some way, some day, some reason. But I would much rather have it be on the other one. Uh, at Canadian C273, I don't get the appeal of Damian Priest. I think he's missing something, but I don't know what it is. Have any ideas? Um, what if I told you he liked the Maple Leafs? Would that help you? I'm, I'm, I'm 
just wondering. Like, what if he was a tremendous fan of John Candy? Would that, would that do it for you? Maybe it's because right now he's playing kind of second fiddle to Bad Bunny in the whole feud with The Miz and Morrison. Now, it could be what it is. I'm not really sure. But give it some time. In a few months, if you still don't see it, let's come back and let's really talk through with it. George asks, if Edge wins at WrestleMania, should he bring back the World Heavyweight Championship since he never lost and since it's a belt that he's most known for? Nah. But I can see where you're going for there. Um, at Vincent Gakun, our head of the table tribal chief's best t- title defense so far, what was it? Um, might be that Christmas night smackdown against Kevin Owens because you had double the audience plus that usually watches smackdown watching that match. Like that might've been the best one. Although the, the couple with Jay were great. And he had another really great one with Kevin Owens. But that might be the best one. Uh, Mr. Jinx. There are three finishers. Stingface, Bronco Buster, and the Tombstone. There are three women. Trish Stratus 2000, Shaniqua, and Jay Cargill. Which woman do you want to hit you with which finisher? Um... Shaniqua can hit me with the tombstone as I get in a couple licks while I'm face down. Uh, I would want... Oof. Trish could give me the stink face and the Bronco Buster is Jade Cargill. Because she can fuck on up and remember that once you go white, you know you've been licked right. Uh, Dylan Schwartz, if you had to watch Cody's reality show in order to watch Sami Zayn's documentary, would you do it? I would not want to. I would hate myself for having to do so. But would I ultimately? Yes. And the reason being is because I could come on here and shit on Cody and Brandy for 15 or 20 minutes about it. You know, talk about the ridiculousness of Brandy saying, it's an honor to be the first black woman in the Rhodes family. You're not a fucking trophy, bitch. Stop acting like it. You should be thinking about, if anything, it's an honor for them to have you, not an honor for you. Like, what type of bullshit is that? Fuck. So I could come on here and shit on it, and I'd always be open to shitting on something relating to Cody Rhodes, because fuck him. Let's see here. The NXT Gen Hero. What big matches would you like to see for next year's Mania? Um... I'm sure it would be nice that Raw After Mania to set the table for Orton versus John Cena next year at WrestleMania. Just throwing it out there. Feels like a good time. Pretty appropriate. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Stephen Hilton 92, if you were booking any promotion today, what wrestlers would you push the hardest? You can have more than three. Well, I would certainly be probably pushing more than three. If I were booking any promotion today, what wrestlers would you push the hardest? It'd be some of the folks you probably know, like the Roman Reigns of the world, the MJFs of the world, the Jade Cargills of the world, the Bianca Belairs of the world, um, Luchasaurus, because I'm trying to sell merch. I'm trying to get over with the kids, too. Like, you're going to have a Roman Reigns there for the ladies, like... You know, those are some of the people. I wonder what some of you guys would do. Now, you know what? I revoke the question because I already know what nerds you're going to talk about. Jack asks, will Kane announce his retirement at the Hall of Fame? I don't know if he'll formally announce it, but we can assume for all intents and purposes he'll, he's retired with the occasional threat to show up sometimes. Um, let's see here. What's next? We've got... Brandon Bell Hogan asks, who is your favorite wrestler today? Today? You already know. There's only one answer. He is the head of the table. He is our tribal chief. He is the number one babyface in all of professional wrestling. Of course it's Roman Reigns. I just added that pause there to make you think like I'd be thinking about somebody other than that. Give me a break. At Keys 10, thoughts on Peacock editing some of WWE's older content. Me personally, I don't care. Me personally, I think it's fucking stupid. If it's some of those segments of the past that have potentially offensive material, then put a warning label on them. Institute some type of adult blocks 
that requires some type of adult approval or something for younger kids to watch those segments. Like, yeah, it actually kind of bothers me a little bit. This whole censorship thing. So you're going to sit there and censor some offensive shit, but then a young kid could turn on the news and they see dead bodies all over the place. They go on other channels of the internet and they see somebody getting killed when they're just an Uber Eats driver because they're getting hijacked. They're fucking laying on the ground dead. Like, give me a break. Pussification of this world, if I ever seen it. Uh, at J Mixtape, should Santino Morella have been world heavyweight champion? You know what? When you look back at the way things played out in 2010, especially when he was in the last two of the Royal Rumble, would it have really been any worse if it was him instead of ADR? Just saying. Uh, Joel Wayne, did you enjoy Christian Cage's AEW match? It was all right. You know, nothing that make me get up and jump up and down. Uh, Wes we 122 do you not like your most popular videos because of how the majority agree with you, whereas you like the vids with a different standpoint to yours? Um, I will say this, is that when I see videos that I see like 95% plus likes, that means I'm only appealing to my hardest of hardcore watchers, followers, supporters. And I'm not ruffling feathers. I'm not, you know, making people think any differently. I hate those videos. I hate those videos. I really do. And now the sound has went out. Damn it, come on. 